In this video, we use Network Watcher to capture IP packets from an Azure VM. Hello everyone, I'm Travis and welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video, we review how to do a packet capture from an Azure virtual machine using the Network Watcher packet capture tool. Before that, please like and subscribe and set the bell icon to get notified of new content. Check out my courses on Azure Virtual Desktop, Azure Cost Management, Windows 365, and Hybrid Identities with Windows AD and Azure AD at Unity.com. The links are below. And thank you channel members, your support is appreciated. Back to it, one common step when troubleshooting network issues is running a packet capture and viewing the network flows to identify any issues. This is often done with packet capture software like Wireshark. If you've ever had to do a packet capture on a computer, it typically involves logging into the computer and installing software and network drivers like NPCAP. Running the capture process is typically manual. That's not needed in Azure. We can run a packet capture on Azure VMs and Azure VM scale sets with the Network Watcher packet capture tool. This tool captures the network traffic and saves it to a .cap file. We can save the file to an Azure storage account or to a local file path. If using a local file path, the file is stored on the target computer, the one the capture is ran against. That may not be the computer you're logged into and accessing the portal from. The file can also be saved to an Azure Storage Blob container. Azure Storage is handy if you don't have rights to log into the computer and download the file, or if the capture process is running as an automated job. Speaking of that, you can use PowerShell, Azure CLI, or REST to start the capture job. This is useful for automation, say if you want an event to trigger the packet capture. We'll walk through setting up a packet capture next. Just a quick overview before we start. The lab has a storage account used to store the capture file. You don't need a storage account if you're saving the capture file to the local drive on the target computer. The lab also has a VM with IIS installed to use as the target and another computer with Wireshark installed. I didn't install any capture drivers with Wireshark we're only using Wireshark to view the capture, not create one. Let's jump into the portal and get started. Here we are in Network Watcher in the Azure portal. Let's go to Packet Capture. We can use a storage account or a local file path for the packet capture. This example will use a storage account and there's one already created. If you would like to use a storage account but don't have one, pause here and create one before continuing. From Packet Capture, we'll add. Select the subscription and the resource group of the virtual machine we're using as a target. Next, select if the target is a virtual machine or a virtual machine scale set. This example uses a virtual machine. Next, select the target VM. This is the virtual machine that will capture the packets from. This example, it's named Capture VM. We can change the name of the capture. For this example, we'll leave it set to the default. Under caption locations, we can use a storage account, file, or both. Use a local file if you're doing a quick ad hoc capture. Select a storage account if using it as part of an automation. If you want to trigger a capture based on an event, for example. This example will use blob storage, not file. Use a file location if you don't want to set up a storage account. I'll select storage account and scroll down. We can get granular with a capture. We can set the maximum bytes per packet. With this option, we can truncate the packets. If we want to capture a lot of flows, but not capture the payload, we could set that here. It still captures all packets, just not all of the packet. We'll leave this set to the default of zero for the entire packet. Set it to 34 if you only need the IPv4 header information. We can set the maximum bytes per session. This will stop the capture once the size is reached. We can set the time limit. The default is five hours or 18,000 seconds. For this example, we'll change it to 300 seconds or five minutes. We can also add filtering criteria. This filter is based on five tuple information, including protocol, local IP address and local port of the target, and the remote IP and remote port of the client accessing this virtual machine. Use this if you only want packets from a specific IP address, protocol, or port. I'll leave it blank. Once ready, we'll click Start Packet Capture. It's deploying the packet capture and adding the Azure Network Watcher extension to the VM. If we go to the target VM and go to extensions, 
we can see it has the Azure Network Watcher extension. Let's go back to Packet Capture. It takes a few seconds. It was loading and now it's running. It's ready. Let's send some traffic to our target VM. We'll go to another web browser. Let's open up a web page on the target server. That worked. We can access a web page on that server. Let's try opening a page using HTTPS. The default is unencrypted port 80, and we're now trying an encrypted connection over port 443. And that failed. This web server doesn't have any pages published with HTTPS. We can close this and go back to the packet capture. We can view details. We can see the session is running. We can also see the VM it's running on. Since we're done testing, let's stop the test. We could have also waited a couple minutes and it would have finished by itself. It's done and now we have our packet capture. If you're using a local file path, the file will be on the target computer. That's the computer we're capturing packets from. For this example, we need to download the capture from an Azure storage account. Let's go to the storage account. Here we are in the storage account. We can use Azure Storage Explorer if we have that installed. If not, just go to Storage Browser in the storage account. We'll go to Blob Containers. And here are the Network Watcher logs. Let's open that. We navigate through the subscription, resource groups, providers, virtual machines, capture VM. Then we go to the year, the month, the day, and there's our packet capture. Let's open that. We'll download the file. And that will save it in our download directory. The very long path to the file helps organize the captures. Now that we have the file local, we can open Wireshark and view the capture. We'll go File Open. And there's the capture under Downloads. Here we can see the contents of that capture file. Let's apply a filter so we can only see sessions with the local IP address, the computer we viewed the web page from. So we'll go IP.addr space EQ and then add the IP address. 10.10.0.11 for this example. Let's set it to only see the web request. So we'll set the TCP port to port 80. Here we're filtering to just the port 80 or the HTTP request. Let's check HTTPS or port 443. Here you can see we have a lot more errors. There are errors because the target computer did not host an HTTPS page on port 443, so the connection failed. We can select any one of these and drill down. And view more details on that error. From here we can filter and search for information from the capture, just like with any other Wireshark capture. That's how to do a packet capture with Network Watcher and view it with Wireshark. I hope that helps you better understand how to perform a packet capture with Network Watcher. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and thanks for watching.